and welfare in all aspects of life by meeting its promises and remaining a listening government in its response to people's needs. Last week, we addressed the issue of passports. We need to clarify further that Kenyans have complained of delayed issuance of passports, and I wish to confirm that the problem is being addressed. The problem has persisted because of delayed supply of 34-page passport booklets, which normally goes for 4,550 Kenyan shillings. This shortage has been caused by slow delivery of the booklets by the supplier. The documents are usually printed outside the country for security reasons, leaving only applicants' biodata to be printed locally upon application. A consignment of the booklets is on the way and will land in the country soon, and the problem will be a thing of the past. We believe so. In the meantime, as I had said earlier, those with urgent need for a passport are advised to apply for the 50-page passports, which uh, this applies in plenty. And of course, remember, we said very clearly there are 70,000 uncollected passports uh, last week. So that uh, should have, of course, uh, reduced because if people heeded what we said, we keep, we keep on insisting they should go and pick uh, uh, those, those passports. Now, on the issue of ID issuance, the government is also aware of the problem of acquiring identity cards by eligible youth, which has been caused by a court order suspending the production of the third generation identity cards. An appeal has been made on the case as we speak, 600,000 applicants for the cards are pending at the civil registration offices countrywide, even as some six, another 684,000 IDs lie uncollected by the applicants across the country. So 600,000 new applicants, another 684,000 not yet collected. So you can see there is a, a balancing out. And please, people should collect this. Uh, as government spokesman, I affirm that once the ap appeal is granted, the government will, ent uh, will embark on massive production of the vital identification documents with the aim of declaring the uh, backlog within the shortest time possible. The government appeals to those yet to collect their documents to do so in order to avoid inconveniences in the official issuance uh, of this uh, very important document. And also, I think to uh, clarify that this is a problem that is, of, is also, government is not happy about because like those students who are supposed to get help loans and they have not yet uh, gotten their IDs, then it becomes a difficult issue. It is interfering with a lot of public service delivery uh, efforts. And so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we really would want this matter to be fully, fully resolved, uh, you know, as quickly as possible. And these are some of the things that we are talking about in terms of um, the courts uh, not being able to work out their things uh, in good time. Now, there's an issue of livestock and, um, and pastoralists, uh, very important, because there have been concerns from the ground about what is it, and we've gotten these concerns from places like Kajado, uh, uh, what is the program actually to buy a, 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 this uh, livestock uh, um, a, by government? How do you facilitate livestock uh, agriculture? Uh, so on one hand, the government is keenly following up on the de-risking inclusion and value enhancement of pastoral economic project, which is aimed at uplifting farmers' welfare in 21 SL countries by cushioning the economies from drought risk, increasing financial inclusion for the pastoralists, and connecting them to the market. The benefiting counties include Turkana, Marsabit, Isiolo, Laikipia, Mandera, Wajia, Garissa, Tana River, Taita Taveta, Kilifi, Kwale, Lamu, Meru, um, Darakanidhi, Samburu, Baringo, West Pokot, Narok, Kajiado, Makweni, and Kitui. So you can see there are quite a number of, of, of counties that are benefiting here. Um, the project which was effected in October 2022 and runs through to 2027 also seeks to facilitate livestock trade across the Horn of Africa counties, uh, country, sorry, and to upgrade livestock value chains by mobilizing private investments. It has financial support for the World Bank, with Kenya being supported by a credit of Kenya shillings, uh, US dollars, 140 million, which is about 16.082 billion, uh, going by uh, you know, uh, the recent um, uh, you know, exchange rate. So you can see a, a big 16 billion. Uh, to support farmers is available, uh, livestock farmers, uh, so that then we are able to, to have them you know, benefit from what we promised uh, as Kenya Kwanzaa uh, government. There are, there are various uh, components of the project. Number one is pasture and fodder production and conservation, livestock breeding co uh, covering Dopa, Sahiwal, Boran, uh, Gala goats, among others, uh, livestock uh, finishing through institutions of feedlots and fattening. Establishment of abattoirs, abattoirs are slaughterhouses, this is a French word, 
for facilitation of meat production and processing of both local and international markets. Then leather tannery and processing, value addition on the livestock and its products, including livestock feed processing. And it's good I tell you this, just for emphasis, that uh, uh, le leather is actually more important than the meat itself that we consume. Uh, and, and, and we, we have uh, you know, 25 million shoes that are required every, every year, for example. Uh, we have 3 million carcasses every year. If that can be turned into the leather value chain, which we are working on as government, or on the priority nine value chains, uh, then that becomes very important. And it's also good to say there's actually some new funding also uh, you know, uh, from our development partners that is also going to help, I beg your pardon, 29 value chains that was just approved uh, yesterday by cabinet. So you can see there's a lot of investment in agriculture, and you'll hear a lot of that when we come to brief you, because it is an economic mainstay. Direct, uh, directly 25%, another 26% indirectly, over 50% of our economy is on agriculture. And that is why it is one of the key pillars in the better plan uh, that we are trying to make sure that it, it finds a resonance and uh, residence uh, within the mosaic uh, of our fabric. So far, this project of 16.8 billion, 16.8 uh, 16 uh, 16 billion uh, also um, will help the number of pastoralists and their dependents uh, through uh, financial services. And we uh, anticipate that about 696,642 Kenyan pastoralists will be able to benefit. Uh, you know, that is pastoralists and their communities. And a total of um, 1,620,293,803 uh, has been paid out as insurance claims pay out to so the benefits. So please, if you have your, your, your goat there, if you have uh, your, your camel, if you have your, 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 your cow, there's an insurance. There's an insurance uh, and you can actually be paid. Over 1.6 billion has been paid out, so please wakulima wa mifugo tuwe chonjo hapo. The project has also seen 107,492 individual pastoralists and 411,123 uh, of their tropical livestock insured. So you can see uh, it's both uh, particularly the tropical stock, uh, 411,123 that is owned by 107,492 individuals. So ensure your, 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 your livestock, ensure, ensure your wealth because this is traditional and now we are formalizing it into the economy. Uh, because when you have an insur insurance product, that means then it is actually a uh, livestock. It is actually uh, you know, going concern. Uh, and that is really, really, really germane and fundamental because we have um, the biggest herd of cattle in the whole of Africa, really. People may not know that. An amount of Kenya shilling 6,000 per beneficiary has been paid as enrollment saving bonus, bringing the total bonus payout to 492 million uh, and 90,000. So there's a bonus also that comes into that, uh, a coupon of 6,000, which is very, very good. The project has also sought to empower the female gender as the percentage of women supported and who own bank accounts has increased from a baseline of 33% to 108% within the pastoralist communities. So only 33% of women were, were having bank accounts. Now, that number, the initial number, has grown by 108%. That is really, really commendable. You can see the empowerment there. Um, it has also created a number of jobs as proven by 163,578 digital accounts. Digital, digital, this is the idea here. So it's, we are also going digital, it's online marketing. It used under this project and the inclusion of 26 formal financial sector companies to provide services to the pastoralists. Can you see how important this is happening? So there are now digital accounts so that you can even have it on an M-Pesa, or whatever other you know, product, but also uh, 26 financial uh, sector uh, companies like uh, uh, banks and other microfinances have already been uh, providing services to this sector. Quite, quite huge. It's going to unlock a lot of potential uh, going forward, formalize it, and even uh, in a way really deal with also the issue of uh, uh, cattle wrestling and what have you. This is, this is in keeping with the government commitment to deploy modern agriculture risk management is instruments that ensure farming is profitable within predictable incomes, just as it was in the 1970s, when the scheduled crops were catered for under the 10 guaranteed minimum return scheme. So we are going back to that, because that time, if you look up to around 1979, uh, you know, the, 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 the commodity pricing boom really helped many agriculture-based economies. So that's where we are going you know, uh, back to, uh, so that we are able to uh, uh, empower our farmers. 
a very, very important uh, point uh, that we need to, uh, to make there. And, and, and one may actually ask, why do you then say, if you formalize this, you are even going to reduce issues of cattle rustling? Because, because of the mismatch of the economy, uh, then you find those that do those kind of works are seen like they do not belong to the formal sector of the economy. As I was driving to come to work today, there was a huge cow on the road, and it was, you know, juxtaposition of the modernity versus, uh, you know, what we may consider traditional. But it's part and parcel of our society. It has not gone down, uh, it, has, it has not gone away because of modernity. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, we need to formalize this. If at all we have to make any progress, you know, going forward. And so this is very important because you can now quantify wealth. This idea of having a pastoralist, uh, you know, person owning uh, 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 500 cattle, but they don't have 2,000 shillings, uh, should actually be a thing of the past. And also the fact that now we've had drought, it, has, it actually means that then you can be compensated when the animals die because there's insur insurance. So I think it is extremely important that we have this program. Uh, we just passed um, uh, that policy uh, in cabinet. Uh, and so therefore, it's extremely important now, the money are there, but also the policy has now been put in place. And, and I think that is extremely important. Now let's turn to the issue of education. Um, uh, uh, the government which, uh, wishes to reiterate its commitment in ensuring the 100% uh, transition of learners from primary to post-primary level. In last year alone, 1,406,557 pupils sought for the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, out of whom 58,429 are yet to join uh, from one, meaning we have attained 96% transition rate. So it's good to note that. Only 58,429 are yet to join from one. This is big news. So we are at 96% because 100% is a target, but we are also, as government, uh, working together with the, national, uh, with the county government to ensure that through the NGAO, the national administration um, officers, national government administration officers, we call them NGAO, that um, all of those who have not attained this are able to go to Form 1, but also there is an opportunity for those who have not done so to go to the village polytechnics that are available and are within the custody or the mandate of the county government. So I think that, that needs to be said, and we shall be providing you with figures of how many they are uh, going forward, uh, quite a number. Uh, in Moranga, for example, there are over 68 of them. So they all need to be harnessed so that those who fall through the cracks, uh, they are also able to go that way. But their 96% is very commendable, only 4%. And so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we really commend that uh, going forward. The government has also provided bursaries to facilitate learners from underprivileged backgrounds. The bursaries are through the National Government Constitu uh, Constituency Development Fund, N NC NGCDF, that is, of course, patronized by the members of parliament, and the Elimu Scholarship Program, which has given out 14,000 opportunities to ensure that there is full a transition from primary to secondary. So that, I think, is, is very important. There are various uh, types of scholarships. Elimu, there is the NGC, uh, CDF, as we know it. Uh, there is the, uh, uh, the Women Reps Kitty, Affirmative Action. There is a the County Government Kitty, and other forms of support the government is able to give to ensure that our students are in place uh, to continue their education. Of course, this is in tandem with the Education for All, uh, that which is one of the sustainable development goals under the United Nations uh, framework, which Kenya actually uh, played a critical role in this negotiation. We were actually a co-president of the, of the Bureau, and I was privileged to be part of that co-negotiations. Uh, further, there is also an enhanced mop-up exercise where education directors are currently working with field officers to make sure that the remnants or those who are still uh, not in school are taken to nearby schools amongst those who were admitted to boarding schools but parents were not able to, uh, to pay for their upkeep. Overall, parents who refuse to take their children to schools are liable to prosecution in accordance with the Children's Act. So it is an offense for anyone of us not to take their child to school just because we feel they belong to us. Those who wish not to continue with secondary education can join the public vocational training centers, I've said earlier, which are now under the county governments. And currently, um, 
we really want to emphasize that these centers are becoming new centers of excellence uh, going forward. Um, and they are actually even private ones, not just public ones. And so going forward, um, um, we really need to emphasize on that going, uh, so that people can know that there's an alternative to it. So I mean, no longer call them village polytechnics so that people cannot feel like they are going to substandard uh, you know, you know, you know, uh, institutions. And so therefore, it is important uh, that you know when you, when you go there, you still get equal support. So there's a differentiation. There are those that are at the county level. We can call them county uh, polytechnics, public ones. And then we also have the, the ones that are managed at the national level uh, through the state uh, department for TVET and, of course, through, uh, regulated through TVETA. Now let's come to digital transformation agenda. Uh, I know people have been hearing about Taptengele. Eh? Uh, we need to uh, state as follows, as government. In keeping with the administration's digital transformation agenda, the cabinet secretary um, for uh, ICT um, uh, has been going around the country to ensure that they are digital hubs, really. And in that regard, yesterday the cabinet sanctioned the digitization of the entire education system to avoid corruption, spanning from basic education to tertiary, any university uh, level education. Because we are spending, is it 600 billion plus on education alone? It's actually a third of our budget. This intervention aims to address the governance challenges within our education system that have led to parallel accounts, charging of unauthorized school fees, diversion of the exchequer release on capitation and other fraudulent activities that undermine the integrity of the education system, leading to the enrollment of ghost students. So we don't just have ghost workers, we have ghost students. That's why you are finding people going to, release, uh, to, to resist uh, the idea of e-citizen. And that, I must say, without a doubt, because I see the papers saying that uh, the president has defied the orders, we cannot stop the momentum of digitization. So those who have been eating school fees, let me put it in uh, layman language, they are, your time is up. Let's put everything within the ambit, because e-citizen, e-properly administered, just by contributing a minimum of 350 million shillings a day, we are going to collect another about 1.5 trillion. If we collect another 2.1 trillion through the other taxes, or the taxes, we are almost resolving the issue of the budget, because our budget is around 3 uh, point something to about 4 billion, thereabout. So this is very important, so that we get to know who are these people demanding money from the exchequer, Yet in actual sense, they are collecting enough to sustain them, and yet this money is going to people's pockets. We have had very good success stories on e-citizen, and uh, we have seen people trying to, to uh, some of the media houses trying to show the negative side of it and cooking up stories. There is no change that has never been resisted. That we are aware. Change is difficult, and government is not going to back down just because some people uh, are trying to manufacture negative publicity. Let us come to the issue of uh, our public debt. We are very happy as government to report that uh, the cabinet uh, meeting yesterday welcomed successful placement of uh, USD 1.5 billion euro bond and termed its oversubscription, because it has been oversubscribed, to mean that investors really have, have a very high degree of confidence in the administration's economic turnaround strategy. There's nobody who can put their bet where they don't think they can recover. So for the naysayers out there thinking that uh, we're insolvent, we, can, we are not credit worthy, I think the many people who have shown interest in the 1.5 US, billion US dollar you know, you know, placement, uh, you know, as advised by our transaction advisors, is a clear testament of the fact that we are on the right trajectory under the Kenya Kwanzaa administration to pay this one uh, bullet payment. Uh, by June of this year. So the successful completion of the transaction places the country firmly on course to buy back the existing USD 2 billion euro bond, which of course is due in June, as I've said uh, just shortly. Ripping from euro bonds placement and the targeted intervention by the government, the Kenya shilling has now reversed the downward trend and is appreciating in value against major world currencies, and even including East Africa. In fact, our currency now is more than, uh, stronger than even uh, our, our counterparts in East Africa. This means that the shilling has now appreciated 
for 11 straight days to trade below 153.75 uh, shillings at some commercial banks. And that is really good. That is really, really wonderful. On Wednesday, the shilling posted its strongest intraday gain against the US dollar in the last 12 years. This is wonderful. And this will effectively lower debt service costs, attracting more investors. And again, I want to insist, part of what has made this shilling to be strong as well is a G2G arrangement, because by now, the shilling would have sold up to 220 shillings. So this is very, very welcome and very uh, commendable. Again, let me insist again on the cost of living. The cost of living continues to improve, as promised by the government. May's prices have dropped by 12.7% last year, driven by improved local harvest, courtesy of good weather and the fertilizer subsidy program. The fall has been a major relief for consumers as it has lowered the cost of unga consumed in many households from 230 shillings to 130. That's a whole 100 bob. And of course, electricity tariffs are expected to drop uh, by 3.44 shillings per unit, and, and fuel has also gone down, even if by a shilling in the latest pump price. This is important uh, because IPRA has just reviewed uh, their, 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 their costings. So we, we are working hard against very tough economic times, but we believe that we are going to do it because this is our great country. It's a country that is full of oomph, pomp. It's a country that has got a great future. I believe that this country can emerge to be the strongest economy in Africa, not just in sub-Saharan Africa, and that indeed we have a great potential towards ensuring that we lift millions of people from poverty. So ladies and gentlemen, wacha niseme kwa machache kidogo, kwamba leo tumekuja kuelezea masuala ibuka ambayo yanahusikana kutokana na uh, miradi tofauti tofauti ya serikali tuseme mwanzo kwamba uh, zile stakabadhi za kusafiri tunapenda kuziita passport shida ni kwamba zile za kurasa 80 uh, zipo za kurasa uh, hamsini zipo na watu wengi sana hawajaweza kupata vitambulisho kuna vitambulisho bado hazijaweza kuchukuliwa zaidi ya 1684 um, ilhali kuna watu 1600 ambao bado wameweza kufanya application tunaomba wale ambao hawajachukua vitambulisho waweze kuchukua lakini kwa sababu ya kesi ambayo iko kotini pia wengine waweze kuchukua lakini tunachapisha uh, passport sasa hivi vile ambavyo tuliahidi kuna mashine ambazo zinafika mwisho wa mwezi huu lakini eh, kama wewe unaweza kuchukua kitambo kiko na kurasa nyingi zaidi tafadhali nenda kule ukachukue ili uweze kufanya kusafiri Na pia tunasema kwamba wale ambao wanafanya kilimo cha mifugo, sasa hivi eh, kuna bima ya mifugo. Na zaidi ya bilioni moja nukta mbili, meweza kupatiwa zaidi ya wakulima ya elfu mianne, ambao wameweza kujisajili rasmi, kuweza kufaidi kutokana na kumpango wa serikali. Hivi karibuni serikali meweza kupasisha hiyo sera katika baraza laki la mawaziri. Kwa hiyo sasa hivi ni rasmi kwamba eh, kilimo, Cha mifugo kinaweza kutusaidia sana sasa kwa sababu ya ile ngozi na dhamani yake. Ni mwito pia tuseme kwamba kuna vile mambo ya masomo zaidi ya asilimia tisini na sita ya wanafunzi ambao waliweza kuketi katika mtihani wa KCP mwaka ulopita wameweza kujunga katika shule za kisekondari. Ni asilimia ene peke yake wanafunzi ya alfu hamsini na wanane ambao bado hawajapata nafasi eh, katika shule zile kwa sababu tofauti tofauti na afisa wetu wa utawala machifu madisi madisi si tunavyowaita county commissioner wanafanya mpango kuhakikisha kwamba wanakwenda katika vijijini kupitia uh, ule mfumo wa nyumba kumi kuhakikisha kwamba watoto wameshajiliwa wame shuleni pesa zipo lakini wale ambao pengine hawawezi wanaweza kuingia katika eh, shule zingine za taaluma tofauti tofauti ambazo zina zina zina, 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 uh, zina wanafunzi wengi tu ambazo zinasimamiwa na serikali gatuzi Shule hizi za ufunzi eh, katika uh, ufundi tofauti tofauti taaluma tofauti tofauti zipo kwa hivyo tunaomba watu wasiweze kuwaweka watoto wao nyumbani kwa sababu ni hatia na sio kulingana na mujibu wa sheria ya watoto kwa sababu we mzazi kama umempata mtoto usidhani kwamba ni haki yako kwamba we una ruksa ya kufanya kwamba asikwende shule kwa hivyo mambo tundio haya 
Tunasema lazima watu wote ingie katika mpango wa e-citizen. Na tunataka aina zote za huduma za kiserikali katika mfumo wote wa elimu ziweze kuingia katika mfumo huu wa kidijitali. Kwa sababu ndio sasa hivi huu ndio hu, ha, haya ndio maendeleo. Huu ndio mfumo huko. Huu hu ndio mtindo wa kisasa. Ukiangazia hata wale ambao wanauza ngombe. Sasa hivi wana account za kidijitali aidha kutumia simu ya runu katika Mpesa na nyinginezo. Sasa itakuwaje kwamba mfumo wetu tu wa, 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 wa elimu ambao unahodhi za kama karibu thuluthi moja ya bajeti ya nchi hii yetu iwe kwamba sasa watu wataka kujilimbikizia pesa ziweze kuingia mifukoni. Kwa hivyo tunasema kwamba hilo litakoma. Hata watu wakikwenda kotini serikali haita sita kuhakikisha kwamba tunasonga mbele kuhakikisha mfumo wetu wa e-citizen umeelekezwa ya mbele. Na tumeona kuna watu ambao uh, vyombo vingine vya habari vimeweka makala maalum kuhakikisha kwamba wana wanadhalilisha mfumo huu wa, 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 wa serikali. Tunawaambia ni bure bilashi sisi haturudi nyuma hatu tishu hatu, uh, hatuwezi kupangwa na nyinyi na propaganda zenu tutaendelea na mfumo huu kama serikali ili tuweze kuhakikisha kwamba wakenya wote wana faidi kutokana na zile fedha ambazo zinatozwa kutokana na huduma za kiuma kwa sababu nini tuna bajeti ya karibu trilioni 4 tunachukua kodi ya karibu trilioni 2.1 lakini ukiangalia mfumo huu wa e-citizen tayari tuna uwezo wa kuchukua zaidi ya trilioni 1.5 kwa makadirio ya upewa chini sasa itakuwaje basi wewe useme kwamba tusijimudu kwa nini twende tukope na tuna fedha za kujimudu sisi hapa nchini kwa hivyo hilo ni jambo ambalo tunasisitizia na tunaomba wa Kenya waweze kuwa na utu kuona kwamba wasifaidi na mali ya umma ili tusiweze kuwa sisi ni watumwa kwa sababu ya mikopo. Mimi naamini Kenya ni nchi nzuri, ni nchi ambayo ina rutuba, ina watu ambao wanajizatiti kabisa kufanya maendeleo, watu ambao ni watanashati, watu ambao wana nguvu, watu ambao wana ari ya kuishi. Na lazima tusisitizie kwamba hilo hiyo ndio nguzo zaidi na muhimu zaidi ya, ya nchi hii yetu ya Kenya. Na tukiwa na umoja na utangamano huo Kenya itasimama. Kenya itainuka. Kenya itanawiri kwa umoja na uzalendo. Mimi ni mzalendo. Je, wewe? Asante sana. Nafikiri tunaweza kuchukua maswali?